<clears throat> All right. Uh, where are we? So, oh yeah, we're we're here. I gotta set this up correctly. I'm, telling you, I'm so out of it. God, stop it! I can't even pretend to be good today. All right, for segment one today, we are starting kind of a two-part series. Well, they're going to be two different topics, but uh, we'll we'll call it two-part series on Rifts Chaos Earthish. Maybe no, we're we're going to kind of get into some of the background of Rifts with regard to uh, why Rifts is the way Rifts is. And the first one is Rifts Evolution of Evil from NEMA, which is an acronym. The only acronym in the book that Kevin doesn't actually put periods in between. <laughs> to the coalition. And uh, if you understand uh, what, what that means, the quick version of it, NEMA tried hard and the coalition is what the result is. And it's going to be the result of what happens if you try too hard. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. And Heathen Dog will regale us with that. If you refer to the description below, you can find links for our various Legion Myth sites on our social media, Discord, merch, etc. Please check those out, join us, and enjoy the swag. And of course, please be sure to like this video and leave a comment. Both of those actions help the channel immensely. That's right. Please bow down and pray to the YouTube gods. Or if you if that's too that's too religious for you, pay them off with your bribes. That's right. You do that through likes, subscribes, shares. And you know what? Super thanks work as well. Yeah. Just like in church, passing passing the plate around. Yeah. Come you, on. You give it to me, we'll skim our part off the top. Well, actually, no, YouTube skims its part off the top with its 30%. And then, you know, yep. from there we can buy a new organ. There you go. <laughs> the charity we support is Wounded Warrior Project. Crafty says the link I have in the description isn't working, so I have to check that out. But uh, I thought it was. I don't know why it wouldn't be working, but uh, it was working before. A national nonpartisan organization whose mission is to honor and empower wounded warriors. And of course, we believe that role playing games should take place in fantastic worlds and that the focus of your tabletop group should be on role playing and having a good time. Yeah. Was it? Was it? Looking for nothing but a good time. Uh, the core values of hashtag RPGate and any good tabletop community are escapism, not representation, entertainment over activism, and natural, organic inclusion. Not forced diversity. And finally, RPG Digest is a live stream podcast discussion, not a concise step by step tutorial. Actually, today I'm going to be sitting back, relaxing, and listening while Heathen Dog puts me to sleep with his, you know, nice little, little, little rendition, his bedtime story for me. Both so it'll be tones. great. Well, I mean, that actually means somebody has to sound it. manly or something, but eh. oh, wow. That, that was, <laughs> I got a knock on my You're back. You're really now. orange today. I know, but that's that's because uh, most of my light comes from the TV, which is now dark because of this. Don't worry, when when I switch to the actual pages, it'll be fine. Oh, okay. But uh, as you can see on the cover of Rift's Chaos Earth is a glitter boy. It's a you subscribe. Oh, so subscribe because because the glitter boys come from Nema, and they're they were originally called Chromium Guardsmen. Every glitter boy was a Nema clo uh, Chromium Guardsman. Just wrap your head around that. And the, the Coalition Samus, the, the uh, flying power armor, also came from Nima. Side note, Heath and Dog has a, probably a more, a more uh, strained history with me straight singing Queen's Rake than even my wife. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, many, many, many times I've heard Max get, get drunk and Reich out. And Garthon. And Garthon. That's right. See, look, I'm not orange anymore. Look at that. All right, now let's zoom in a little bit. And uh, what we have to do is we have to look at a little bit of the history of Earth before the rifts. And we do that when we get to page eight. This is awesome. There I don't have go. to do anything today. I can just there kick we go. back and... December 21st, 2098. 2098. This I'll is the end of the golden age of humanity. End. For the last 50 years, humanity has been, by by almost every metric, extremely prosperous. There there has been the uh, the technological, you know, singularity event for for energy, which is the which is fusion, fusion energy, and after that, all other technologies started rolling out one after another after another. It's just the the dominoes started falling advanced bionics, uh, space systems. At, at, at this point, humanity is a decade or two away from faster than light travel. 
we were on the fast track to we becoming can do it. an intergalactic civilization. It was crazy. At, at, at least extra solar. At the very least, we're going to be able to leave our solar system. You're, there, make, you're making this sound bases. like this comes to an end. It does. There's moon bases. There's a, there's a Mars base that's actually all but self-sufficient at this point. It's crazy. Technology is booming. There is no more third world countries. Almost every country in the world doesn't have a problem with food, water, work. Everyone is so much happier than they are right now. It's crazy. North America joined forces militarily and politically, Canada, U.S., and, and Mexico, who, who solved their, their drug cartel problem. <laughs> oh, I know, right? This is fiction. Come on. But they, they uh, gathered together and they formed the Northern American Alliance in 2035. Nah. And then they created the Northern Eagle Military Alliance, NEMA. Now, what NEMA is, is the FBI, CIA, NSA all rolled into one for the entirety of North America. They were, they were tapped with, with any uh, crime or, or terrorist issue or whatever that comes from outside of these three countries or traverses two or more of the countries. They're called in. They all but replaced the FBI as, as federal investigators because they were handpicked the best of the best from all agencies across all three countries. NEMA was no joke. And most of them are all genetically engineered. Because genetic engineering was one of the things that the that the golden age of humanity excelled in. And when I say excelled, I mean, I'm like, oh, crazies and juicers. Yeah, crazies and juicers came out at the end of the golden age. That's true. But your regular genetic engineering was was had no downside, was all but 100% perfect. And you get uh, an extra D4. Wait, 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 and, wait. And Are you implying stuff. that crazies and juicers have a downside? I'm flat out saying it. Yeah. Wow flat out saying it so the world's going great right it's it's all it's all you know aces everything coming up coming up roses for the entire world technology's great the problem is toward the end of the golden age the technological breakthroughs started to slow down and people stopped for a second and realized oh my god what have we done we have so much new technology out there we have no uh, controls in place for many of this stuff and people are starting to abuse them because that's what people do they're stupid so problems start to arise friction what's an example what's an example of something that got abused uh the uh the the juicer and the crazy the mom conversion uh process it was it was broadly implemented before it was properly tested because people just trusted technology so much so it wasn't until you got, you know, hundreds of people on it, did they realize the downsides in the, in the juicer conversion? Uh, oh, wow. People die after a couple of years. That sucks. This sounds like exactly something a crazy would say. If you're out of one crazy, say there's no downside. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and then p people who had their brains hooked up with, with bionic implants started to go nutter butters. Could have seen this coming. If you had proper testing, but nah, testing's for suckers. Technology will never fail. No, us. It was, it was, it was called real world testing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Technology will never fail us. That's crazy. And here we are with the rate of new discoveries uh, and innovations of ground to a crawl. The sense of wonderment was replaced with fear. Heroes of science and business were now condemned for being short-sighted, greedy, and even outright villains concerned only about fame and profits because you know that's what businessmen do as unexpectedly as it begun the age of enlightenment was over the nations had thrown themselves into creating marvels and building a better world took a new look at themselves their neighbors and their not so friendly rivals and shuddered though many had prospered these remained areas of tremendous despair there remained areas of tremendous disparity because no one is is gonna is gonna get the not fuzzy end of the of the lollipop. Okay, there are gonna be some countries, Myanmar, Somalia, Syria, whatever, that just can't bring themselves up, no matter how much high tech just stuff they have. It's just not gonna happen. So there are some countries that are still, you know, dirt farmers or whatever. Is it their fault? Partially. 
that's just the way it is. You know, some, some people aren't going to succeed. They're just going to, they're just going to suffer and die. That's how it works. So they, they all get ornery and start talking about, Oh, it's not fair. It's not fair. And then, then they, Oh you know, Jesus. Exactly. Then, then, then they start being a hassle to everybody else, you know, creating terrorist organizations and, you know, punishing other people because they did better stuff like that. Oh, so today you should wait are you sure it's 2098 not 1998 that happened well it's it's the future kind of like now except if now had oh, mega damage weapon and it's the blocks. future today exactly the future <laughs> is now what many were calling the new cold war era had arrived with a vengeance once friendly allies now bickered and argued over safe application of their respective technologies proposed laws and restrictions tend to keep the world safe were demonized condemned and rejected as measures that ensured the technological elite held onto their power base and kept those without under their thumbs okay so everyone started to freak out uh the haves which there were many of wanted to keep what they have the have nots wanted to get what the haves had but the haves don't want to give it, it it's a tale as old as time, right? Tale as old as time. If for whatever it's, reason you couldn't put together he, a heathen dog's math right there, just say it's it. Yeah, tale as old as time. It's what happens every day in every country constantly. Look at U.S. politics. Look at it. It's all right there in your face. If you didn't understand that, you're living it. Yeah. You you understand it whether you believe it or not. It's true. It's true. Now in this in this new environment, Nima had a lot of problems mainly because South America and Mexico didn't get along too well. Certain countries in South America and Mexico didn't get along too well. Because all and the vampires? Yeah. What's that? Is it because all the vampires? No, there's no vampires yet. Oh. Remember, there's no magic yet. The rifts haven't happened. Okay. No magic, no vampires. And the U.S., stupidly, just like it does now, starts propping up other other governments because they, they they think it's in the world's best interest or their best interest or business best interest or whatever and these these governments invariably end up being corrupt and start doing dumb shit well that's exactly what happened dumb shit the great cataclysm day one december 22nd 2098 oh merry christmas Merry Christmas, people. <laughs> world's gonna end central and south america feel it first north america 30 seconds later Europe, Asia, Australia, and the entire planet are shaken a few minutes thereafter. All are engulfed, engulfed by a disturbance caused by lines of energy erupting out of the ground and shooting three miles into the sky. An energy stream that crisscrosses the globe, which isolated networks clustered at places long held to have magical, spiritual, and supernatural significance. You're talking Stonehenge, Giza pyramids, uh, uh, Mexican pyramid-esque. Uh, ziggurats, whatever they were, yeah, yeah. all these yeah. things started erupting with, with magical power. Now, how did this happen? How did this happen? Well, I'm going to get into a little bit of that. Uh, where is it? Oh, it, Was it Merkis' fault? It. Doesn't actually say it yet. The, the entire world started erupting in rifts, started happening. It and it wasn't well, rifts or ley lines, yeah, le ley lines. Uh, well, the rifts, the rifts are coming. <laughs> erupted in ley lines it didn't happen all at once it wasn't a, a switch that flipped it was a cascade effect starting in south america and then going out into a radius until it engulfed the entire world nema and the nation's military go on high alert and scramble for action reports coming out of detroit and windsor border on the absurd walls of blue energy have appeared from which demons and monsters are said to be pouring into the streets both cities burn out of control hold on Presumably hold on how can rioters, detroit tell the difference fair that's absolutely fair presumably from rioters and a panic-stricken public no it's from demons as you can see this is not awesome this is a bug bugs are bad uh-huh. Are you trying to say something? <laughs> are you alluding to anything there, sir? No, I'm just telling you bugs are bad. Okay. But what really happened? Let's find out. Most of the world will never know how or why the planet changed in the blink of an eye. Even the sketchy information and outline of events presented here is known in its entirety to only a handful of elite personnel in the world's militaries and governments. Virtually all of it will be lost to posterity over the next few years. But you, gentle reader, will be counted among the privileged to know. Here we go. Wait, wait, do I, want, oh, do I want to know? Is this actually going to hurt me by knowing? <laughs> no, no, this isn't a self-fulfilling thing. You're okay. 
Okay. Unknown to human science, there's always existed a sublime energy source that courses through the planet and indeed through the infinite megaverse. In the days of ancient man, this primordial energy was known as magic. The ancient Chinese identified the lines of energy as dragon tracks or, or uh, dragon veins. In places of magic, the abode of good and evil spirits. From this knowledge knew the, grew the mystic arcs of feng shui. People of primitive cultures and other parts of the world also knew something about magic and earth energy. The druids of England and France, the dowsers of, of uh, mystics past and present, all spoke of earth energies, lines of power, places of healing and magic and evil. Some even spoke of doorways to hell and other dark realms. Oh, that's real. <laughs> <laughs> However, with the advent of science and the Industrial Revolution, magic, the mystical, and even psychic were replaced with science and technology. Now, it's not to say that in in pre rifts Earth and in 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 a pre uh, cataclysm, uh, magic and science didn't exist. It was just at such a a weak level that the best you could do was was maybe bend some spoons. All right. That's about it. You can't really do anything else. But only when the monsters were near. Otherwise, you didn't have enough PPE. Well, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, the, the 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 magic that you're left with is throwing of bones. And, well, it hasn't been written yet. So um, chicken no. entrails and stuff. That's pretty much all you got. And know, it's the, the, ma the magic pre Chaos Earth hasn't been written yet. Only psychics exist. Wasn't isn't it beyond the supernatural? That's the the. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> The Palladium so, people will get the reference yeah, there. It's true. Uh, the notions of spiritualism, magic, and supernatural were rejected by most modern people because it was it was it was not reliable and not provable. So that's what happened. And then we move on to wait. Didn't they show a picture of it just up above? How is that not provable? Is that deep fake? Well, no. That that's after the cataclysm. It's very provable then. Oh, fair. Very provable then. Okay, so here's what actually happened. You're going to love this. Uh, in South America, much of which had enjoyed a boom time during the Golden Age, reeled from economic hardship and civil unrest when it came to an end. While most of the nation struggling peacefully throughout the downturn, others became violent because people are dicks. Two such small nations clashed repeatedly. One was supported by the USA with an uncanny knack for backing the wrong horse, under protest, Nima was ordered to provide this South American ally with a dozen suits of Glitter Boy power armor, USA G10 Chromium Guardsman power armor, to support its sagging military defenses. Does it never mention the country's name? No, they, they don't want to, because it really doesn't matter. The G10s were only to be used for defense under extreme duress, but after an altercation with its enemy, the nation defied the conditions of the loan and sent the G10 squad against enemy forces active inside the other person's, the other country's border. There, there the enemy de forces were slaughtered by the superior technological might of the Glitter Boys. Fueled by bloodlust, generations of hate, and a sense of invincibility provided by the power armor, which that latter part I get. I get it. You have MDC weapons, especially, and armor. especially now when you have resources for them as well. It's not like they're scarce. Exactly. Uh, the troops pressed on to attack and decimate several innocent villages. The nation under siege responded by dispatching their full army battalion. And when Ooh. the battle ended, one short hour later, twelve thousand soldiers in the town of uh, Guadamarta were obliterated. Twenty-four thousand townspeople were killed. 1,800 soldiers and 13,000 civilians managed to escape. All this destruction at the hands of 12, 12 GSA, uh, USA G10 power armors, uh, mega damage war machine versus an SDC opponent. The 12 could have destroyed a force three times that size. While several of the power armor units were damaged, only one had been completely destroyed. The new mega damage super alloy of the armor and the powerful shoulder mounted cannon, the boom gun, worked beyond expectations with devastating results. How would you, like you have to say? How would you like to be that guy though, the one that got destroyed? The the one the one guy who got his armor destroyed, he's got to be the laughing stock of yeah. that entire place. Like, how could this happen? They had AK 47s and bad dreams, and you lost you you lost a glitter boy. What the hell's wrong with you? Well, they had missiles too. They had they had stuff. Shut up, dude. You're a puss. <laughs> Ho hopefully he didn't survive because he's, he's not going to survive the, the constant ribbing. The invading nation withdrew, but 
refuse to apologize or make any overture to their enemy, claiming self-defense and the need to neutralize the potential threat. The injured nation appealed to the world, condemning NEMA and the USA specifically for calling for worldwide sanctions against such weapons destruction and vowing bloody revenge. When they were ignored and their neighbor threatened a re repeat of the destruction unless they shut their holes, <laughs> tensions rose to a fever pitch. Now, December 22nd, this is the day the rips open, and now you're going to know exactly why. The two South American nations struck at each other with a limited, very limited, exchange of outdated nuclear weapons millions of lives perished in a heartbeat the brutal event in and of itself would have been terrible but the isolated incident with minimal direct impact on the rest of the world what nobody could appreciate was the nature of the ley lines and magic that had lain dormant for millennia here's the rub ley lines are for lack of a better word channels of magic energy this energy has always existed in nature and the energy is called PPE, Potential Psychic Energy. Ancient rituals of human and animal sacrifice were actually designed to draw upon the energy. At the moments of death, PPE is doubled, and you can get twice the amount. So you can actually get magic to work. As fate would have it, the planets were aligned, causing the ley line energy to surge to its highest level possible to begin with. The hour was midnight, a peak time when ley line energy spikes. And the first city nuke was built on a pair of intersecting ley lines with other lines nearby. When the bombs went off, a million lives perished in a flash. Their magnified PPE energy doubled at the moment of death and poured into an already overactive and magnified ley line energy. So here's the deal. Normal adults have D4, 2D4 PPE at max. But when you have millions of them, let's just say it's 2 million PPE. They all died in, They all died pretty much at the same time. That's 2 million PPE dumped into a ley line that is already at high capacity because we have planetary alignments and we have midnight. And I think it's it's very near the so, December 22nd is very near the solstice. Yeah. Is December 21st? It might, even, might even be the solstice yeah. that year. So, so we, we, we have another one right there. Well, one, one so, other thing, don't kids have more PPE? Yes, children have a 3D6 or higher PPE because so, they, they haven't trained themselves to use their potential yet. Yeah, so uh, nukes are indiscriminate, so yeah, I bet you a couple of kids died in there too, so now you just keep adding on top animals, of that. All the animals too. Animals have PPE too, usually like one, two, three Zs, you know, stuff like that, but, you know, a million animals too. I mean, this is South America. There's animals within the radius of a nuclear bomb, right? They're all going to die too. And their PPE is going to double and dump in there as well. So what happened? Uh, holes, holes started to appear. Yep. Uh, causing them to burst with energy like a dam that could no longer contain the waters it held. This had a ripple effect on the neighboring ley lines, causing them to surge and flare with energy not seen in 150 million years. Okay, who is there to see it but previous? You don't know that. <laughs> uh, gods exist. They just, they just, uh, you know, ignored Earth because there wasn't enough magic there to be to Godly. care about. A moment later came the retaliatory strike that sent the life's energy of a million more lives in the lines of mystic energy, causing them to erupt with power, starting a chain reaction that could not be stopped. So if the first couple of million PPE wasn't enough, Minutes later, another couple of million PPE went into the same grid and it blew every circuit breaker ever. Shorts happened everywhere and that's when the cascade started. Ley lines erupting everywhere, causing tsunami, tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, volcanoes erupting from out of nowhere, killing millions more, adding more to the ley line and so on and so on. It's a... It's a tidal wave of, of PPE energy that just keeps getting bigger as it murders more of the world. Uh, the massive powering the ley lines, however, would have other ramifications beyond the understanding of the scientific mind. The life energy of trillions of living, uh, I mean billions, of living creatures, human and animal, well, ants don't really count. I don't think they even have PPE. And turn the once invisible and forgotten ley lines into raging conduits of mystic energy that would last for thousands of years. 
The ley lines now radiated with such power that the earth was being realigned on a cosmic scale, becoming a trans-dimensional nexus spanning the multiverse. Where two or more lines cross, power was increased, creating a nexus point where space and time are meaningless. Okay, Doors why is other... everybody always messing with Earth? Why can't this stuff happen in some planet way out there, 300 million light years from us or something? Why does this crap always happen on Earth? Doesn't matter, Doctor Who, the MCU, whatever. It's always Earth. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, in, uh, in the Rifts universe, it happens everywhere. It's just our turn. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole cycle of ley line energy is repeated on many, many worlds. But uh, in in recent memory, no one no one's gone to no one's gone through this shift in a very very long time. No one can remember it, so that that's why it's important. Day two, wow, lots of people didn't make it to day two. They died on day one. The world is in the throes of a great cataclysm of biblical proportions. Satellite and moon base reports confirm that the St. Louis area has erupted in an estimated 200 energy lines with at least 13 to 18 points of superactivity and flares of energy that seem to correspond with reports of strange phenomena and even alleged dimensional and coronal distortion. The Detroit Windsor area, among others, is similarly the site of intense activity of inexplicable energy and unknown disturbances that can be seen from space like giant flares of cosmic energy. The Ohio Valley is another center of energy and disturbances. Other places around the planet exhibit similar to worse anomalies, with so-called Bermuda Triangle, British Isles, and China being the most spectacular. Because, you know, historically they had the most magic before, which means they have the, they have the bumper pack now. And it does not go well. China's got a lot of, I'm sorry, China had a lot of population. Now they're all fuel for the fire. <laughs> they're all just cordwood now. Initial reports from orbital satellite space stations and moon bases present a clearer global picture of the situation, confirming the appearance of over 5,000 lines of unknown energy and thousands of intersections that appear to be focal points for that energy. Exactly what these energy lines do, they don't really know yet. Uh, the picture from space also confirms, check it out, 33 volcanic eruptions in the last 24 hours. 119 tidal waves, the appearance of 47 freak storm events, and mass destruction over the last 24 hours. One observer summed it up as well as any, and when she said, it's as if the very planet is convulsing and tearing itself apart. Indeed, the planet is undergoing convulsive change. As the lines of energy, which role they might play in a cataclysm, what the energy does or means and nightmarish disturbances are beyond our understanding. All we know is what the effects are, which are bad. And it talks about Archie 3, Archie 4, Archie 2, uh, Archie the, moon base, uh, the, the moon base Archie, the Mars Archie, the, the NORAD Archie, and the Aberdeen, Maryland Archie which uh, that that's Archie three, the one in, uh, in the early source books, um, are either separated from, from the grid or damaged or taken offline or whatever. Uh, the Yellowstone super volcano erupts at nine 45 PM on day two, killing NORAD and everything in the West from the Rocky mountains to Nebraska is just a giant hole. Now that's awesome. No, well, I don't know about awesome. Yeah, not awesome. It's 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 spectacular, but not awesome. <laughs> then we have day three, Christmas Eve. Contact with all but one's nearest neighbor is lost. In the United States, the West Coast is pulverized by a roller coaster of earthquakes and tidal waves and is now being buried under tons of hot ash already over seven feet deep. Everything from the Rockies to the Midwest is likewise being buried in a storm of ash. Winter storms and strange disturbances, demons, only complicate matters. Contact with the eastern seaboard and numerous cities in the states is completely lost. Remember, it was 119 tidal waves. 80% of the population of the world at this point in time lives on or near a coast. They're dead. They're dead now. And yet, yet when you keep saying West Coast, I don't care. <laughs> well, uh, any coast. All coasts. I, I know, but to tell me that California fell into the ocean, I don't care. Well, it's folk. Yeah, are they? You know, and 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 right now we're at a severe disadvantage of not having enough folk. So even even uh, you know, Calistanians probably would be useful. 
at least for slave labor, whatever. It doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is the kind of crap that's happening now. All right. So what does NEMA do? In North America, the military and NEMA have mobilized. And where their forces are obvious, there is some sense of hope, law, and order. The new G-10 power armor called Chromium Guardsmen, known in the future as Glitterboard, are deployed by the Thousand. They are walking tanks made of laser-reflective chrome, serving as highly visible sentinels that bring comfort to the frightened multitudes. As do the Flying Eagle Samus power armor. With those oh, how branches. times have changed. I know, right? <laughs> Painted with colors of its national flag, either USA, Canada, or Mexico, depending on the pilot. Now, NEMA had had equal equal sections of folk from Canada, US, and Mexico. And I'm not going to be intimidated by one that has a big red leaf on the on its chest. It's just I don't know. Hey, you know, Canada by this time could have weaponized syrup. I don't know. <laughs> could be super dangerous. Who knows? Most communities across North America and the world are left for their own devices with little or no guidance, protection, or resources from their national or regional governments because they're all dead. Some people unite to help one another. Leaders arise from local government, police force, fire departments, churches, businesses, and neighborhoods. Remember, uh, this happens more than what would happen in current times. In current times, warlords would be the norm. When, when the government shuts down, warlords would be the norm. But this is at the end of the golden age, especially in the U.S., where, where people were generally nicer because they didn't want for much. So initially, people are going to be helping each other because that's what they've always done. And it's always worked. So keep that in mind. There are still going to be warlords, but they're not going to be as many as there would be if this happened today. Uh, elsewhere, rioting, looting, and panic tear apart communities that have survived the initial wave of destruction. Mob rule is law. At the point, there's nothing resembling gangs or organized group of any point, only panic-stricken mobs. The world is dark, cold, and turned upside down. Okay, now the rest of this is, uh, is a uh, first-person telling by a, by a NEMA general named Sawyer. Before we go into that, should we hit some chat? Yeah, hit some chat. I'm not really going to go into this, really. Okay. I mean, if you want to get, get the Cast Earth book and, and read it, because this is this is a really, really fascinating tale. All right. First one, Aaron Dragon says, I don't see the point of playing Cast Earth. We know what's going to happen. No matter what, humanity mm. loses. But you don't know. No, humanity wins. And <laughs> with, with, a, with a myopic vision, humanity wins. I say that because humanity didn't completely die off. Which vegas money if there was a vegas still had really good odds on and and i would argue yes this isn't pure canon or whatever but if you're playing a chaos earth game maybe your future is different yeah I mean, and that, that... no and a lot of a, uh, a lot of people in rifts don't know what happened during the dark age guess what you can live it you are now in the dark ages right now in Chaos Earth, the beginning All those of the atrocities, decade. nobody will ever know in the future. It's okay. Go for them. There you go. <laughs> uh, enlistment's four years. Juicer's last four years. Seems to track. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, all right. He's, he had this fascination with thoughts, like, like had a couple messages with thoughts on there. What? what are you talking about, thoughts? Uh, the rabbit people from Battle Lords of the 23rd Century. Oh, right. Yep. They made it to Earth. If South the thought, if the thought made it to Earth, I'd burn my Rifts books. I'd, I don't I'd need, burn. I don't need the hillbilly yokel bunnies coming in, uh, just procreating all over the place, overpopulating the planet. I'd burn the Earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, when do we play Phase Rule? Would be the question after that. Yeah. There you go. Um. Uh, so we sent a gold disc across the universe, but Twitter also goes off via satellite signal. Some DB could see that threat to come destroy us. And to them, it would be a mercy killing. Yeah. Maybe to some of us, too. Yeah, fair enough. Hey, my account is suspended. They denied my appeal. I'm not on Twitter anymore. Don't kill me. <laughs> there you go. I'll throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, and there we go again. Once you got destroyed, piloted by well, a thought. Get the thought out of here. <laughs> get the thought out of here. And RPG is dumb says it's nice that the Lord justifies mechanics that incentivize human sacrifice. It the thing is, it always has. 
since uh since Palladium Fantasy. Human sacrifice for for N- NPCs is is an excellent way to to get a lot of magical juice. Yeah, but that does doesn't make it moral a moral thing to do. Well, well that's why it's only NPCs are allowed to do it. The bad guys. They're they're not overly moral because they're right. bad guys. All right, that's all I had. Okay. So now, now we move on to what uh, what what is Nema and what are they doing? All right. So here's the deal. Why, first of all, why was it named that? Because oh my god, Northern Eagle, really, really Northern Eagle, yeah. I mean, I understand it's our country's bird, but do you think why, why wasn't it Northern Maple Leaf? Because that sounds dumb. So does Northern Eagle. Better than Northern Maple well, Leaf. Fair. Northern Eagle at least sounds cool for like if you stopped right there, Northern Eagle or Northern Eagle Arms. I could see that as a gun company. Fair. I anyway, can see that. That's, I just, I just want right, to be pedantic. So this is what happened. <laughs> Northern Beaver. Northern Beaver. That's fair enough. Uh, let, let me see if I can find General Sawyer. Like there the dude from Lost? It's Lieutenant General Lindsay Sawyer. Remember, she's uh, she's genetically engineered, and she's fifty. Okay, or fifty-five. She's got a really weird looking face. Well, it's I, I'm, I'm sure genetic it's engineering didn't lit. work for her. It's poorly lit. No, she's <laughs> okay. pretty hot actually. There you go. She has a physical beauty of twenty. Not in that picture. <laughs> Not in that picture. No, but come on, that's how it is. Gotcha. So she's L- Lieutenant General Lindsay Sawyer. She is. Uh, she was in charge of the Atlanta uh, Southern Southern Southeastern uh, NEMA uh, Battalion, and she lost contact with everyone in her chain of command. Which means that she was now, as far as as far as everyone knows, the highest ranking member of NEMA in, in the continent. So she has to make a decision. Atlanta is burning, so they decide they're going to take all of their shit. All their people, all of the all of the civilians that they can, and move north northwest because it seems like there's less bedlam and fires over there. They were wrong because the the Ohio Valley is is rife with all kinds of magical crap, and they end up walking through it. So here's how NEMA became the coalition. They were beset on all sides by magical things that they cannot explain. Things that look, act, and smell like demons from everywhere. And in the early days of the cataclysm, rifts could open even on a ley line, not just on a nexus point. So no place was safe because the ley lines were everywhere. So they just pop out of nowhere, bloop, right in the middle of dinner. Boom, giant demon. Could happen. Did happen all the time. Well, maybe if you invited them to dinner, you wouldn't have that problem. No, no, uh, you're you're the food to them. Oh, yeah. Uh, there were there were so many evil demon like DBs that that came out of uh, came out of these leyline rifts that you could not distinguish good from bad. There was just too much going on, too much at once. So they decided shoot first, ask questions never, because they wanted to save people. It's their job to save humans. It's their job to save citizens of the U.S., the uh, Canada, and Mexico. It's literally their only tenet to to preserve the country and the lives they're in. So, if it if if you know you stop and talk to a demon, it tries to kill you and everyone around you. You stop trying to talk to them. You just shoot them. That's it. Well, when when you get rid of things like Geneva Convention and LOAC, yeah. Well, no, there is no Geneva Convention for for these things because they're not human. They're not from here. The world is trying to kill you. The demons are trying to kill you. You're constantly in a fight or flight response. You're going to make some some expedient calls. Are they the right calls in the situation? They are expedient, which means they're right. That's just the way it is. You want to save the most people. you got to kill the most demons. So. Over the next few years, demons bad, rifts bad, magic bad. These are not leaps of the imagination. These are not unreasonable conclusions to what's going on. Step by step, 
Nima began to hate magic because initially magic is what killed all of their friends and family. Wouldn't you hate it? Probably. Even when human beings started to exhibit psionics and magic, they were shunned immediately. Lots of parents killed their children that, that, that awoke magical and psionic abilities. Because they were afraid. Because everything psionic and magical has been trying to kill them. Now it, now it, now it's in little Johnny. Little Johnny's going to kill us in our sleep. Kill little Johnny. Is it right? No. Yeah, Is I'm sure expedient? there were. I'm sure there were a couple of little Johnnies that did. I'm sure. Yeah. No, actually, in the story, there are a couple of kids that killed their parents. That's what happens. So you either have to bet that Johnny's going to be a good boy. And and not use his brand new mind melter powers to, you know, melt your mind. And remember, Johnny only has to act out one time ever. Yeah, Johnny acts out one time, people die. So, you have to weigh the odds on this one. Johnny's eight years old. Johnny no longer has any toys. The internet doesn't exist. And Roblox you told him he couldn't exist. go out and play because it's dangerous out there. And he's now having a temper tantrum. And he's now having a temper tantrum, which knocks down the, the, the building you're squatting in and your wife dies. All because you didn't kill Johnny right away. Guess what? You're going to kill Johnny right away. Is it right? Debatable. Is it expedient? And does it save more lives than it costs? Yes, it does. Killing one Johnny has a great chance of saving three or more lives in the future that Johnny's going to accidentally take. Or maybe Let's be fair. It only matters if you're Johnny. Yeah. Seriously. So. Killing DBs has a net positive benefit to the rest of humanity. This is now a fact. It's irrefutable. The numbers don't lie. Killing DBs save lives. Okay, so then how do places like Tolkien and so forth rationalize that? No, 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 no. Because they 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 didn't uh girl up under the umbrella of protection from Nima. They had to they had to do other things to get along with the demons, hide from them, barter with some that that actually talk to you. And many, many of these isolated pockets of humanity were wiped out because of it. But one or two got lucky and happened to, a, across a, a DB that eh, doesn't really eat humans. Okay, cool. And now now you can barter for protection from that DB. And if it's a powerful enough DB, your small civilization can prosper. But for every one that that happened, that they prospered, 10 were murdered by, by DBs, 10. So you had a 10% chance of not getting completely ruined by, by an, by an, an intelligent well, that, DB. That beats the Pareto solution. Pareto solution is 80%. We got 90%. So yeah, wiping out all the, all the weirdos. Yeah. Actually and fits the, into the, the, to the numbers of it as being the right thing to do. Yeah. Ne and Nima did the math and they were like, okay, well maybe one in every 10 DB is good, but the other nine murder a hundred people, bef you know, if we let them in. So we kill them all. That's the only way to keep the most people safe. And when you're on the, when you're on the edge of an extinction event, what you need is civilians. You need people to get food, to make food. You need people to make babies. You need to perpetuate your species, which means you have to keep most of them alive. And this was the most efficient way to do it. Can you blame them? No, it was a smart call. It was the right call under the circumstances. Did it foster after generations a hatred of all DBs? Yes. A distrust of all magic? Yes. Why? Because that's the way you survived. We didn't understand magic. We didn't know how to control it, how to block it, how to keep it out, how to defend against it. All of this is unknown to the people of the time. So the only way to defend against it is to eliminate it. And that's what Nima did. Even General Sawyer developed minor psionic abilities. You know what she did? Hit him. Kept it secret. Didn't tell a freaking soul. Now, that right there could have been a turning point. If she trusted her leadership enough, if she trusted the people and told them, I also have this, have, have some, some of these 
magical abilities. Everyone in and around Nima looked up to her like a goddess. She is the she is the only reason they survived the trek from Atlanta to Ohio. She actually uh uh created the the the, the first uh walled walled city outside of Chicago, which which later would become Chi Town, which was the you know the head of the the seat of power for the coalition states. She in the in the views of all the people that knew her or knew of her was a savior of humanity if this savior of humanity came out and said i am also a psychic i still love humanity i'm still going to protect you to the core of my being but now i can float a pen in the air maybe it would have went the other way maybe not yeah i mean just to, I, to be fair just all throughout human history and and part of this is how humans would react to certain situations. Right. Abs absolutism is just easier to understand. Yes. Right, it's wrong, or otherwise, to... you can grasp it. This good, this bad, one, zero. That's all I need to know. It yes. makes whether your IQ is a three or a 33, everybody can grasp it. And yes. it's real simple. And the, the, the simpler the idea, the easier it is to get people on board. So all magic bad, kill all DBs. Very simple plan. It's very effective. It saves lives people are on board now the 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 leader and and instigator of this plan is now in some in some people's eyes a db herself so she decided to keep that secret and because of that the idea that humans for humanity purity all that stuff started running rampant throughout the generations and nema became harder and harder because the world wasn't getting any easier the first hundred years after the great cataclysm was a shit show. It didn't get better. Well, after about a dozen years, the, the uh, artificial winter from the Yellowstone vol uh, volcano eruption started to die down. That's fun. You could actually grow crops again in large numbers. Awesome. But other than that world didn't get easier. It kept being hard. And a hundred years is like three generations in an apocalypse. Because yeah. well, three because well, every twenty years is supposed to be a generation. So yeah, every uh, every uh, metric in the golden age of humanity was average lifespan is one hundred eighty years. Oh wow, for a human being, one hundred eighty. Twenty percent of people got over two hundred. I want that. Yeah, a ninety year old looked like they were in their late twenties, early thirties. I want that just because I want to see when this happens in twenty ninety eight. I want that I can too. say I lived through it. So you go from having a lifespan of around 180 years to, I don't know, 30 in a single generation. People are going to panic. Shit's going to get real. And it got real bad. So a hundred years is, you know, three generations of uh, lived and died in that time. And each generation has seen their, their children and their parents murdered by, by awful DBs. So people are going to feel a way about that. These are all incremental steps over the course of several generations that turn Nima, a peacekeeping force charged with the protection of the humans under its care into the coalition states, a human supremacist force, fascist, but also ostensibly for the protection of humanity. But we're still not there yet. We're still, we're still Nemoids right now, right? Yes, we're, we're still Nemoids right now. So there, there, there are a lot more caring people and the possibility of, you know, talking to a DB that initiates conversation. There's, it's possible still. Not likely, but possible. If you work for Nema, if you are just a citizen and a DB comes up to you, they're going to shoot him in the head. Shoot him in the head, kill him dead. And then, of course, the DB is going to respond, you know, violence for violence. And then Neem is going to come in and, and kill the DB. And then that's a that's another brick in the anti DB wall that's being built. It's so just, Mar Hawkman is just mean. You no, know, it's entirely possible. All right, let's go. Let's look at some chat. OK. RPG is dumb, says Nima gets it. Hmm. At least at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Shadow and Sun. So the moral of the story is don't be Johnny. Yeah, don't be a Johnny. 
Johnny has Johnny has DB powers. Johnny should have shut the hell up. Johnny didn't because Johnny's eight. He Draw propaganda you. posters for the CS. I love it. I love it. Flying Samus. That would be hilarious if HD made a coalition propaganda video. Listen, all right. I especially now. I like I when we did Riffs Ultimate, I was very, very for the coalition. Half of it was joking. The other half was, you know, if if I was in Rift's Earth, I would definitely want to be under the umbrella of protection of the coalition. It's yeah. a no-brainer. I am an average human being. I cannot fight giant MDC bugs. I cannot defend myself against, you know, the the undead hordes of ten vampires. Ten tentacle monsters that like to swim in puddles. Exactly. I cannot defend myself <laughs> against that. It's it's not like uh give giving up a little bit of, of of freedom for a little bit of security. No, I have zero security. If I want any security, I have to give up all of my freedom. It sounds like a bad deal until you realize the other side of that coin is you just are dead. And remember, we're talking from the perspective of a normal person. Yes, a normal. And person. most people, even most characters, are still normal people yeah you could say what are borgs and juicers okay they are they specifically built <laughs> to do what they do to fight yeah. these things yeah. your rogue scholar still a person that has to wear armor your yep. vagabond still a just a normal person that's got to wear some armor yep. I, I you can completely go down that list your normal non-oc seed citizen just a normal person just trying to deliver the goods from this city to that village over there without having something jump out of the sky and try to suck his brain out through a straw. Yeah. And that happens a lot. Yeah. So, it's so uh, you, you die or you, you submit to the coalition and you are protected. You get to have a family. You get to have kids who grow up also under the protection of the coalition. All you have to do is obey and you get to live. Yeah, looking outside the box, yeah, they're the bad guys. Sure. The Empire in Star Wars is the bad guy. Yeah. Now, let's look at as a normal citizen in those societies. Coalition of the good guys, the Empire's the good guys. Yeah. From inside, I mean, even in, in episode four, Luke wanted to join the Imperial Navy. Because <laughs> he wanted to fly, and, and that was the best deal in town. And he had no qualms about doing it, because he didn't think the Empire was evil. It was just the government. That was it. And it's the government you grew up in. So it's your government. Okay. Happens. Just kill everyone named John to be safe. Some people did that. I mean, hysteria is a thing. So, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're going to... Just as a side note, this, this John is armed, and it's less than an arm reach away. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, yeah. Okay. Chewbacca, Chewbacca stepped out of a rift. Max calls him a weirdo and blows him away. Yes. Well, duh. He comes out. What's the first thing? This hairy beast, yeti looking thing comes out. Yes. Goddamn right I'd shoot him. Heck yeah. And that's the average person would definitely shoot him. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty has that one where if you watch the end of the episode, it's like these big bugs when they're doing the go-go trons. But if you watch the end after the credits run, it's like, okay, everybody, you got to go over here and you've got to explain to them that things are bad and tell them how to, you know, I can't remember what it was like, tell them how to have fusion and all the goodness in the universe. But of course, when they get there, they look like big monsters like Mothra and so forth. Ah, ah, shoot it, shoot it. Because we can't understand them. You're goddamn right. Shoot them. That's it. Uh, what else we got? Uh, let me get that one. Uh, hashtag I stand with DB. Stand with DBs. <laughs> D DB demons would trend on Twitter December twenty third through Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T Twitter, Twitter is a place where like, no, the DBs are misunderstood. And of course, well, Twitter people are the first people to die. Yeah, which is as it should be. And you're a racist for thinking that DBs killed them. <laughs> no, no, I'm an eyewitness. <laughs> You misunderstood. You, correct you, me if I'm wrong. That isn't my truth. <laughs> yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. But... Okay, I, I don't talk about your truth. I talk about the truth. <laughs> right. Correct uh, me if correct. I'm wrong, but during the cataclysm, everything getting through rifts were rift traveling entities like demons and devils. No, just like just like in in current current era rifts, 
sometimes a portal will open and someone will accidentally get sucked in. That happens too. It's happening a lot now because rifts are opening everywhere all the time. So people accidentally get through. Now, of course, there are the supernatural intelligences and and ma major demons, minor gods that 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 saw rifts come up on the on their multiversal radar like a giant flare, and are opening rifts to there just to check it out to to see what they can eat and suck and conquer and whatever. That's happening a lot too, but a lot of it is just accidental rift opening and people just wandering, people or things just wandering through and being stranded. That's happening too, but. People see them all as all the same. DBs. Dirty. So they dirty, just kill them. D. Dirty, dirty DBs. And thank you for the $5, Hungar, who says, look who's back again. Hungar's back. F your friends. Yeah. Don't, you don't, don't F your friends. Unless you're literally talking about that, then hey, that's called friends with benefits. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for the $5. <laughs> And last one I had started, it's like, you could argue psychics and mages are naturally equipped for this DB world and SDC humans are out of date. Okay, Magneto. You could, but the problem is prioritizing humans who have psychic and magical powers does not perpetuate the human species. There aren't enough of them. So you got to make a choice. Keep humans going over the generations or possibly uh, humanity not existing in three or four generations time. I'm playing a half Splugorth. Then you're, you're playing something that's going to get drawn and quartered and, and burned at the stake. So have fun with that. I identify. <laughs> all right. That, that's all I had started there. So, okay. So it, it gets into Nema heroes and chaos where the world is falling apart. And your, your job is to be a, a Nema, you know, uh, either officer or trooper or whatever. Uh, rescue worker uh, depending on what what kind of campaign that your game master wants to run do you want to run the, the military portion of the campaign then you will be a chromium guardsman or or a samus eagle pilot and and you, you will be tasked with you know uh saving people or patrolling for demons or whatever or you could be firefighters or cops absorbed into nema given uh, given this cool nema power armor and stuff like that and your your job is is to save people from catastrophes like you know a, a a demon knocked over their building people are trapped in there it's your job to save people you could do that too that's fine you can have the the apocalypse is is a plethora of stories and your game master could focus on any of them that's why i really like post apocalyptic settings uh, rifts is too gonzo for me it's just as a whole there's just too much to it but generally speaking that's that's the main reason i like post apocalyptic settings cuz you can have some Interesting uh, character development, uh, interesting world development, because everybody's struggling, right? Yep. I mean, that's that's and how do people act when they're struggling? If there's one thing I did not like about The Walking Dead, both the comic book and the TV show, it was there was never a good guy. Never came across a place where it's like, OK, we can relax. Nope. Everybody is out fucking everybody. Else. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's screwing everybody over that. And that happens a lot. I mean, also, you know, you as as a cop. Are, are going to come across these warlords every once in a while. People who have the like five or six blocks of a, of a city that they've protected. And uh, they, they have the, the people under, under subjugation, they're pillaging, they're raping, all that stuff. And you have to go in there and stop this nonsense. Well, usually you have to kill these people. Is that right? Well, they are warlords. They are enslaving people. But they're also keeping them safe, just like you're keeping people safe. They're just doing it in a different way, right? I mean, it's, it's all semantics. It's all gray area in an apocalypse. There is no, there is no paladin in an apocalypse. There isn't. You, you cannot be a paladin in an apocalypse. There's, there's too many, there's too the many. Cyber Knights might disagree with you. I, I disagree with the Cyber Knights. And they, they didn't come, they didn't come until, uh, until to the tail end of the dark ages. There, there's, there's too many gray area answers to all of these questions. Nothing is absolute right and absolute wrong when the end of the world is nigh. And that's how Nima slowly but surely transitioned into what it is now, the coalition states. Because too many choices were made. They were right. They were the most expedient. They saved the most lives. But it was another brick in the path on the way to a fascist government. 
All right. So let's get to that point. How does how does that happen? How does that come to be? Well, no, we don't have that here because oh. this is this is made to be in the in the in the hundreds of years, the, the couple hundred years of the Dark Ages. This is the beginning of the Dark Ages on. And so you are still Nima. You are still good guys. But even in your campaign, you could uh, as the game master, you, you could have more and more supporting NPCs be for the kill them all camp just because of what they've witnessed and what they've been through which is all understandable. If every single DB you've ever met has tried to kill you, you're going to try and kill all DBs first. That's just how it is. That's a, that is a rational decision. And if you come across one that's nice, but you don't give it a chance to talk, you just shoot it in the head, you will count your blessings and move on. You will not lose a moment's sleep. Because every single DB up until that point has tried to kill you by maybe sucking out your brain. So what's the dividing line? So for folks who watch this video, mm -hmm. and like, what's that dividing line of when Nima now is the coalition? Even if it's a slow transition to get there, there has to be a, there has to be a date when they said, hmm, this is no longer a thing anymore. We're now this. It doesn't give the specific day because it <laughs> happened during during the the Dark Ages. But there was a point at some point where Nima stopped being a peacekeeping force and decided that humanity is only going to survive if, if they are, if they are under a more uh, unified and, and some would say a coalition rule, of sorts and efficient rule. So instead of Nima being like the Jedi, a peacekeeping force for the Republic, Nima became the empire, which was the ruler of the of the republic you know the 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 ruler of what's left of humanity as far as they as far as they know of north america they became the rulers not just the cops that's when it happened that's when the last pebble went into place on on on, on that that particular shore of fascism when nema decided it was going to be in charge okay mar hawkman says freedom is a threat to safety yes in an apocalypse, anyone who says, oh, you can do whatever you want, wants you and everyone around you to die. So let's answer a question here. What would happen if all the normies disappeared and the world was now run by DBs? Well, that means humanity died and Nima failed. That's it. Humanity was, was its own planet destroyed itself. Okay. That could I have got, happened. I've got the next couple. Okay. This is too gone, so but MCC is not correct. I think I think he wants you to elaborate. Rifts is too gone, so but after the bomb is not correct. I think I, I think he's looking for more. It's right there in the books. <laughs> I don't have to deal with dragons. I don't have to deal with spaceships. I don't have to uh, deal uh, with uh, with all types of things popping in all over the place. Okay, so one you got furries, and the other one you have a random technological item. There you go, and some radiation. Much, much less. Yeah, it's Gonzo, but it's not to the point of weirdness. And and to be fair, I only like Gonzo when it is science fantasy. I don't like Gonzo when it's fantasy. So like even Earth Dawn, I do as much as I love it. I do on occasion simmer down some of the magic in there or some of the weirdness that can happen. But uh, not not by much because it's so much is baked into it. But no, uh, after the bomb, it's all SDC. It's all kind of normal stuff. You can add the other stuff, but Coalition versus Empire of Humanity, Coalition wins hands down. There's not even a fight. Yeah, it's a I slaughter. mean, I, I, I would like to say, I know Beyond the Supernatural is by canon, the, the prelude. I would actually like to think it went from Beyond the Supernatural to After the Bomb to, to Rifts. I, I would like to see that because that kind of does seem like a progression if you look at it. I could see actually. After Actually, uh, Nima, if, if, uh, if, if you read the, the, the uh, story as, as told in the, in the diary of General Sawyer, that, that's what all the, the, you know, Christmas Day, New Year's, all that stuff, all the story is, is her first person account. Uh, they, they discovered that dogs can smell sup supernatural creatures, even if they're hidden or ma magically obfuscated or whatever. Yeah, people have been saying that for a long yeah. time. The cats and dogs can see ghosts and blah, blah, blah. Yes. And it gives rules for all animals and, and, and supernatural issues. The cool thing is dogs are the natural 
enemy of all supernatural evil creatures and dogs in this high magic environment will defend humans at all cost and dogs their their natural claws do mega damage to supernatural creatures but they are not mega damage creatures themselves so they get squished really easy but if they bite and scratch a supernatural creature they will actually do super, they would do mega damage to it because they are the natural enemy of all supernatural creatures cats same way natural enemy of all supernatural creatures but they get the they get the added bonus of when when a supernatural creature damages them it is changed to sdc damage oh weird i didn't know that but cats are not friends of humanity as we all know so RPG, they, they, they will not defend a human our uh, rich core book the coalition oppresses magic users and they're bad federation magic we mages are literally terrible i actually I, I want to say that part of me likes that because it's so easy to write it in that the coalition are a bunch of fascist nazis and look at us those who accept everybody are the good guys right especially in today's modern everything so part of me likes this but part of me also doesn't like it because if you're trying to express the coalition as the bad guys, you kind of have to have them there. <laughs> well, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, this is this is this is uh, why the coalition, the Federation of Magic, and New Laszlo actually exist. The Federation of Magic and New Laszlo, they are both magical, magic-based civilizations. Mm -hmm. New Laszlo is objectively good. Federation oh, I, of magic you know, what? I forgot about that. Objectively I bad. The coalition, they say, is bad. But here's the thing. If the coalition accepted magic early on when it was still Nima, it could have gone either way. 50-50, coin flip. We could turn out to be like the Federation of Magic or we could turn out to be like New Laszlo. They decided not to flip the coin. Kill all magic. Kill all magic users. Don't allow them in. And guess what happened? Humans survived. It was the sure thing. So they took the sure thing. You're going to blame him for that? To hell with you then. Humans humans first, especially when beset by demons of supernatural origin outside this plane of existence. You got to pick a side, people. It's either going to be with yourself or you're going to go off into the wilderness and, and let something kill you. There was really no choice. I do, li I do like ultimately the fact that uh, every one of them is a gray area. Yeah. I know some people are like, I'm so sick of gray areas. Well, I like things that feel realistic. Yeah. The ver verisimilitude, I know people like to use that word, but uh, it, whether it's realistic or grounded or something that you can grasp onto, I don't like everything to be a caricature, and this game is all full of caricatures as it is. So having the coalition being that, do I want to live under the, 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 the jackboot and be safe? Maybe. Do I want to live in this free area where everybody's damn near out to get each other? And I, I don't want to say gilded. I, that's not the right word. Um, but but they but they act like mafia duns. That's the way I understood it. And if I'm wrong on that, that's just the way I took it when Federation, it came to Federation. Imagine, yeah, yeah. 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 They, they, they have a they have a council, and and all all of the council members there uh, have sliced up you know uh, mob level you know parts of the city yeah. as their own fiefdoms. It's corrupt from the, it's corrupt to the core. But you have some more freedoms theoretically yeah. until yeah, you, you have, don't because somebody yeah. wants to extort you for Yeah, you have more freedom and less safety. Uh so anyway, I I I actually end up liking that uh myself. So I uh, got a couple more that started then we'll get into uh comments from last week. Now, yeah. this one's controversial for you. Nope, Chaos Earth, page 16, second column. Rifts to, uh, disgorge hellish creatures that can only be called demons, delighting in torture. And then references which page, uh, which, which, which PG? Uh, yeah, OCC, yeah. What's, what's that, PG? Uh, I, I think you meant page, but uh, the, oh, okay. the, 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 the which OCC is in here because, you know, demons from, from other dimensions started whispering to people at this point. And people were scared. I just watched my 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 son and daughter get eaten by by a giant bug. Are are you going to make make a deal for safety and power when it seems like no one else can help you? Yeah. You're probably going to make that deal. Is it the right call? No. It isn't. But it's it's either that or be eaten by the same bugs tomorrow. 
<laughs> so so witches in the beginning of the apocalypse, I can't blame them. I can't because I might have made the same decision myself. I think he was commenting on the fact that that uh, he, what was his other comment that everything right off the bat were devils and demons. Yeah, and you said not necessarily, and he's like, no, it says right here they are. Well, That's- no, no, but, but the thing is, you you can't know. I mean, rifts are opening everywhere at at a at an unprecedented, even uh, you know, unprecedented level now com- compared to the the rifts core book, and people are falling into into and out of rifts all the time in the rifts core book. Now there's so many more rifts. There's got to be more people falling in and out of it just just because of numbers. We just assume if you came through a rift. Sh- sh- you're done. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, uh, right now the the Rift's Earth was a flare, a, a a giant metaversal signal went out when it woke up. So all of the all of the powers of the multiverse are coming here to check it out, and a lot of them, ninety percent of them, are evil. Because evil wins. This isn't this isn't real life. I mean, you know, it is real. Evil, evil wins in real life. So that this is kind of like you know. Uh, copying real life where evil has has a tendency to win more than imitating life yeah so evil things come here and they're like oh crap there's there's still a billion people left we can eat them okay so yeah and uh two comments that basically say the same thing then we'll get into the real comments hopefully i have them available um coalition makes perfect sense given the circumstance of rifts earth i agree with that and Crafty Matt says, so the coalition is going to treat me better as a human than as a DB. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a better bet. If you are a normal human, you can take your chances in the out in the wilderness, you know, trying to befriend a DB for help, which is probably going to get you killed 90% of the time. Or you can uh, you can jump up with, uh, with Nima and uh, have a 90% chance of living. 10% chance of living, 90% chance of living. I'll go with the 90. It's not hard. The the math is is not is not difficult on that one at all. All right. Now, if you remember last week, we talked about, well, first of all, subscribe, like, and share. Yeah. And if you have comments for Heathen Dog and his explanation of why we should all worship the at the altar of the coalition, yep. uh, let him know in the comments. Emperor Prozac is my man. <laughs> Every time I see that name, I keep thinking Prozac. All right. So last week we talked about attribute penalties in uh, play, uh, in Rifts, specifically Rifts, because it's the only book that has Rifts, Rifts Ultimate, Ultimate Edition. Ultimate Edition, yeah. The first one, Scully the Hypnoskull. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. I played Rifts in the 90s and just bought Ultimate Rifts yesterday. I revised my Vagabond, and I originally rolled a natural 23 for his physical prowess, but I also had a 6 physical beauty. My other lowest stat was an 8, mental affinity. Now my ultimate build has a 29 physical prowess at level 1. I can also switch my physical beauty with my mental affinity. And ultimate Vagabonds get a plus 2 MA, so I don't have any stats with penalties. Am I cheating? Technically allowed to switch your roles to the beginning character creation. Okay, if the thing is, uh, it, it all it all depends on your game master. If if your game master wants you to roll three d six top to bottom and take take it or leave it, then that's what happens. If your game master allows you, because you're going to be a human, to put all of, you know to roll three d six and change your stats around, you can do that too. If your game master says no four four d six, drop the lowest one and put them anywhere, then you can do that too. That's fine. And any any of the su- suggestions that the book makes on how to and how to roll stats and place it, as long as the GM says, "Yeah, we're using that," then that's what you're using. Mm-hmm. So no, you're not cheating if you're following the, the game master's character creation rules, and you're and and they they at least partially coincide with the book. I mean that that's what I would do, but technically that's not necessary. But I would want to go with the book as well. Yeah, I uh, I don't I I find it so easy to raise attributes in the game uh i rolled a couple of bad ones and while my character isn't perfection i rolled a couple of bad ones but they're not there anymore for very similar reasons as to this one one was speed 
I was like, oh man, my speed sucks. Oh, a robot pilot has a has an automatic running skill. Great, give me my forty four. <laughs> you know, so all of a sudden it's my speed, speed wasn't so bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Rift specifically, more than any of the other Palladium games, yes, you could say, well, the physical skills. But even outside the physical skills, pick an OCC that says, all right, uh, if you do not have a twenty one, just raise it to twenty one. Yeah, yeah. But- Crazier Juicer has that right in the thing. Like- like if you have a physical prowess of less than 19, raise 19. If you have a physical endurance of less than 18, raise to 18. Physical strength less than 21, raise to 21. That doesn't matter if you roll the threes. They're minimum 21, 19, and 18. You know? Yeah. So there, there's there's your fix action right there. So so you know, and thinking about it since we covered uh the topic last week of the low low attributes, mm-hmm. I stand by what I said, where I like it conceptually. I think that they're too Severe. they're too penalizing. Yeah. But at the same time, it's so easy to get around them. Unless you have that game master says, nope, that's what you got. That's what you're doing. And I've, oh, I've no. honestly never seen that. But but no. if you do well, have I, that, have you? Okay, you didn't do it in our games. No. Uh, roll in order, keep 3D6, you know, whatever. In fact, most games that I see, and you, you guys have probably heard me rail about this before when it comes to Palladium games. If you roll a human, they say, oh, just roll 46, re-roll ones. What the hell is the point of that then? <laughs> like you already get the extra d6 and so forth so um when i was looking at the stats of uh what, what was the name of that uh, lieutenant general or uh, sawyer. That you, sawyer she had lots of 20s yeah lots of 20s but you said you said something genetic that's, engineered thank you yep she was genetically engineered if if you create a nema character you get to choose or roll on the on what your parents decided to genetically engineer you as you could be uh, a supernatural at not supernatural but a greater than natural athlete which means you get a, a plus d4 to your finalized strength endurance physical prowess they, they could have they could have genetically engineered you for intelligence which means you get a plus d4 a d4 plus one to iq and and a d4 minus one to ma or you you could have been genetically engineered for beauty which means that you get a, a d4 plus two physical beauty and uh and a, a d4 minus one ma and all kinds of stuff you get to choose how your parents engineered you in the womb. So yeah, you're going to have better stats. Yeah. You get but a, a, nor- but a normal person. Yes. Still. More than a normal person much. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying, but, but a normal person, you're not going to have those. Like I, if somebody came to me at the character that look, had all those twenties on there, you know how I am about high attributes. I mean, mm, yeah. I think I'm gonna have you roll in front of me now. Thank you. Uh, of course, I'd have you do that anyway. Anyway, the point is, is I agree with Heathen Dog. No, you're not cheating. Also, for the other folks out there, there's so many ways to get around that. I don't think that it's game breaking to have those those negative attributes in there unless you come across a situation where your game master is just a dick. No, but and, having an IQ of six or less is bad. Yep. Well, then don't put it there. That's a, that's a choice you make. <laughs> well, un- unless you have to roll top to bottom. Yeah, well. Again, then you, then I, I just re-roll. But the, the cool thing is IQ's first. So if you roll a, a six IQ, you're like, starting I'm gonna over. Start over. I'm yeah. gonna start over. <laughs> this character's still born. I'll even throw the paper away for you, just so you know. Yeah. Just so you know. <laughs> All right, next. Fat gamer says, I don't like the level of negatives you get from low attributes, especially IQ. Yeah. My mother, well, when last tested, literally had an IQ of 65. She makes the second highest paycheck of the 11 of us on the property and is well on her way to being a night manager where she works. And she's worked there for less than six months. The the detriments for your attributes are ridiculous. Okay, for the attributes in the game are, are ridiculous, yeah. Okay, well, uh, comparing them to, to real real human level IQ, I don't, I don't think they're... they're is good Palladium the game that says that, though? I forget. One of the games that we play says that. It's like, just take it, multiply it by multiply 10. Multiply by 10, and that, that's your IQ. Yeah, that, that's what I've heard, too. I, haven't, I didn't see that in Rift's Ultimate. It might be in there, might not. I don't care. Yeah, I didn't see that written anywhere. But uh, okay, if if you want to equate an IQ of sixty five to an IQ of between six and seven, you you can. I mean, it's it's your game, right? You you can do that. That's fine. Which which means you're going to have half the OCC related skills rounded down or rounded up. I forget which one, but but uh, you're gonna and and you're also going to have half of the OCC related bonuses for that, and you're gonna get an extra d4 in secondary skills and if you have a six or a five or in this case a six i think you get a d4 plus or d4 or d4 plus one to an extra stat and with with your mom if you want to equate that to real life it could be mental affinity which means yeah she's not she's not as bright as most people but she's super likable 
and you know and she she has ju just like my character with an iq of seven you know uh does not have a broad width of skills but the the the, the small narrow view of skills i have very very deep so in her element she may not be intelligent but she's well versed and trained and so she's effective so we, we were taught that in sales when i was in sales yeah. they used to tell yeah. us don't try to bring on intelligent people they're not going to follow the system i was one of those guys uh they're not going to follow the system they're they're going to think that they're smarter than the system they're, and they're not going to follow it the dumb people that you bring in especially if they know that they're dumb and like you know what i'll just do what i'm told it takes them a little bit of training but they're the ones that do well yes the the the, the script is tested yes it works yes that's what it is. I mean, if, if you're a sales genius and you can go off the script and, and make sales as well or better than the script, well, you're a sales genius. Good job. Yep. You know, that's great. But 99.99% of people are not sales geniuses. So follow the damn script. If, if, if your mom is well-trained and she's well-liked, she gets results. You're going to advance in an organization. It doesn't matter how smart you are. You got results. You're going to advance. People like you. You're going to advance. That's fine. Okay, so so uh, was it uh, no inquisitor? I think that's what it says. Uh, it says here's unlimited page fifteen. The exact IQ is equal to the IQ attribute multiplied by ten. So, yeah, I thought it was played okay, in. I said this somewhere, right. but but here's the thing. I I don't like personally. I don't like that. I like the at just an abstract nature. If you're talking a three D six system, let's not get into the the tweaks of uh, Palladium with the extra D sixes and so forth. Let's just think D and D Palladium, Castle Crusades, whatever. Right. Whereas three to 18, I just treat it as somebody with a three is not as quick on his feet as somebody with an 18. Person with the 18 is just going to know more, is going to be faster on his feet, et cetera, et cetera. But it doesn't mean that that three means you're fucking retarded. Because yeah. I don't like the idea that something that you can roll and play as a character means you're retarded. Yeah. And so, but the thing is, in, in, uh, in Riff's Ultimate, with uh, an IQ <laughs> of, of six or less, you're... You're retarded. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't like that. All right. I did not get the entire quote on this one, but I did get the majority of it. Okay. Uh, Bloodstone says, uh, I like the concept of these systems for low stats. It gives more references for what the stats mean in the system, how they translate to the real world equivalents. I don't find that I don't find that necessary at all, but I get what he's saying. This is why I picked this comment. I, I, I get what he's saying. Uh, the campaign concept is the base of uh, base of all of course this could be useful for curse type applications this part i agree with and i think mm -hmm. we talked about it a little bit right yeah maybe maybe not uh for curse type applications uh, to be healed or removed as soon as possible uh, also because i think you were even saying like if you have to spend more than like a session like that just get rid of the character or whatnot well yeah i mean I if, think if you have to spend more than a session of, of of role playing trapped in in the body of an iq of someone of one or two it's not fun you're not having fun. And and if the if the game master says, Oh, you're gonna play this for a few days, like I I got other shit to do. I can have fun doing other things. And I call that weak sauce role playing, but that's me. <laughs> like, no, like, you, uh, you can't role play an IQ of one or two. You can't. You don't have any you 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 don't have any basis to to you know to start upon. You you can't fathom an IQ of ten or of ten or twenty. You can't. How are you gonna role play that? You have no reference don't need a reference it's a role-playing game i just don't make any decisions i might uh, drool i might whatever but that's uh, not fun for you and it's not fun for anyone else and it wouldn't and be fun to play says, for oh, no, full... you're gonna suffer through it for three four weeks I'm like no i'm not I'm gonna suffer through it until the, the characters find the cure or, or whatever it happens to be and that's what they're on the mission for it, i don't I'll, know i i, I do consider that week sauce role-playing yeah I'll, I'll be back then thanks yeah well, yep, then I, uh, then you can just stay home. I'll play with people who actually want to sit in my game and play it. All right, I'll I'll have more fun doing what I'm doing than I will be playing okay. your game. If if, if that if that's if that's your rationale for fun is that you have to be fully involved every single time at the peak of your no that's that's weak sauce role playing. You got to learn to play nope. dumb people, smart people, IQ uh, weak two people is unplayable under any circumstance, and that's it. Okay, but that, we're not even talking one or two. We're talking six and seven. Hey, I I role play to seven. I can do that. Six or less, not fun. Actually, you can't because you didn't role play a seven. <laughs> you were thinking pretty strategically. Only, only with his training. That's it. Anything that was outside my training, when, when, whenever the game master gave allusions to things, oh, birds are flying out of that tree way over there. I ignored it. 
<laughs> or the, 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 these, all these bugs seem to be moving in a, in a strange pattern. I ignored it. I ignored it. It was, it was beyond my ability to comprehend. It wasn't in my training. I wasn't trained for it. I don't know it. That's what I did. Well, uh, then you shouldn't be co the, uh, cooking the books. All right. So I was, I was gumping it. Uh, I was, uh, where are we next? Also, uh, also good in those circumstances for role-playing applications. Your players are gamers who like this type of thing. And, and I wouldn't say do this to, like, everybody in the party's got to suffer through this for weeks on time. Like, no, but if there is something that comes in that, uh, yeah, I don't know, you, you drank, oh, didn't, doesn't Dungeons Dragons have a cursed potion that lowers your IQ? You, at least I think, I think it used to. Um, yeah, and you're going to suffer with that for 24 hours. And if, unfortunately, this battle that we fought today took four hours and the session's over and you're still within your 24 hours, yeah, you're going to deal with that next week. Mm -hmm. uh, also, for an alternative personality, a really weak one uh, that is... Sorry, sometimes it's hard to read. Uh, really weak one that is like a third one. More for comedic effect. I don't like that kind of stuff, personally. I don't know your thoughts on that, but uh, I don't yeah, like... I, I don't like comedic effect role-playing. Uh, and a way to add something to the Jekyll and Hyde paradigm most often used for crazies. Definitely would get more XP for roleplay, plus a story arc to, fit, uh, to fix the situation as it plays out. And that's, what, that's the line that, that stuck with me that said, yes, absolutely. If I'm stripping something from your character as the game master, and I, would, I don't even want to say that I'm doing it, but if, if it's happening in the game and you're, something's being stripped from you as your character and you're roleplaying it and not not like a douche, not like it's just a chaotic, neutral, dumb dumb, but you're actually trying to role play it. That absolutely would be worth role playing experience points. I 100% would give out extra experience points for that. And in the in the Rift's Ultimate book, it says that if you have two stats that are that are you know bad, then if you role play it, you get a 10% XP bonus for everything, on top of bonuses to your other stats the d4 plus three plus a d4 whatever you know it, it it's it's the game trying to bribe you into playing badly on purpose i don't like it palladium always had it to where there were no bad stats and mm. then rips ultimate comes along and not only gives bad stats but severely bad stats right no and and, and that part i agree with like i said it's for, for me too pendulum swung way too far on that one. yeah uh, i know i looked for it last week but i wasn't able to find it put it of course right after i was i found it oh there it is uh mine was set to minus 10 so it was it was three five ten the, fifteen yeah three, three and then three, four and five is all i did i oh, you had to have a five or less in order to have a negative okay and then at four and five you had minus five percent xp and minus five to all um skills and okay. then at 10, it was still mine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At three, an attribute of three, uh, it was minus 10% to XP, but still only minus five to all skills. So essentially it did slow down your experience. Yeah, and because that was, you have trouble learning. Yeah. I get it. But yeah. that isn't game breaking. And if you think no. it is, well, no, no, it isn't. And, oh, nope. That's the last one. So there yeah. we go. Yeah. The, the reason being it's not game breaking is because, uh, just like in, in, uh, in many, many other role-playing games, your OCC has, has a, has its own experience chart, which means everyone's going to gain experience, gain levels at different rate, even if they gain the same experience, a city rat, like a thief in second edition is going to level up faster because their, their experience table is nowhere near as severe as say a cyber knight or a ley line walker or a, or a mind melter. Though those ones are the ones that take a lot of experience points to gain levels. So now if you look I, at I it that way, that's that's no different. I suspect you do this anyway, but mm -hmm. let's just go with as written for just a moment, right? In the rules in the in the uh, Rifts Unlimited book, you are a detriment. I mean, there's just no no yeah. two ways of looking at that. Yeah. You are a detriment, but. What could you do? Well, I hand wave that. I don't play with those rules. I play with the old version rules. And I could see people doing the same thing because you know somebody's going to whine. Like, I have to take 10% longer to get there. You're either going to run, because I saw this with uh, with old D&D. Remember old old d d if you had a 16 or higher, you got 10% bonus. Or, or you got a 5% bonus, and then at 17 or higher, you got a 10% bonus. Whatever it happened to be, depends sure. on the addition that you were playing uh, to your XP. I saw game masters just say, oh, just take your 10% on top of that. Like, didn't matter what you're 
<laughs> what your prime requisite was. You just gave I, it to everybody. I didn't even use it. I didn't even use that. Oh, I did. I, I, I used I it, but I, I used it by the book. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't. I didn't use the bonus for high attributes. I was like, nah, nah. I wouldn't have cared personally. No uh, for application in my eyes. I don't, I don't need it. I, I didn't like it because it caused people to have to have that sixteen, or I have can't to have the high stat. Exactly right. That sucks. That's stupid. It's bad role playing. You don't need a high right. stat. I'm not going to incentivize you to lie to me. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, there we go. That is the end of segment one. So go ahead, like, subscribe, and share. Tell us what you think about it. You know, uh, every time somebody's going to, if sorry, actually already happened during the stream, somebody's going to quote some page or something yep. that's like, you didn't read the right napkin. Yep. That was, this was written on. We don't care. Um, cont context. I want you to sit back for a second. I want you to think about the context. Does your pedantry matter? It probably does not. If it changes the point we're trying to make, let us know. If it doesn't, keep it to yourself. We don't care. Or right. put it out here and then get some sort of asshole message back from me because I love typing those messages up. Even when, even when you're a longtime viewer, ask the guy who just got lit up for me this morning today. 